hello good morning to all of you so uh, let's start our second lecture which is about uh, the introduction to computational chemistry so in the last lecture we have uh, made a summary about the quantum chemistry and finally we have uh, defined the path how we can enter to the domain of computational chemistry okay so today uh, let's define exactly what is computational chemistry so like uh, if you do any calculation using calculator or by pen and paper whatever it may be complicated we said that these are all calculation but if you do the say, uh, calculations using computer or with the help of computer then the term arises that this is about computation so from here as we uh, do the calculation using computers we will uh, reach the domain of computation and as we actually solve the chem problem in chemistry using this computation so we can define this as a computational chemistry okay so computational chemistry can be said that chemistry with the help of computer okay and now what we have to understand that how computer works so computer uh, needs some instructions and which actually says at the software and which also run by some algorithms or programmings and behind the algorithms there are uh, some fundamental principles or mathematical equations which we are going to solve during the computation okay so let's actually uh, is a comp but definitions of computational chemistry we can say that it is a branch of chemistry which use mathematical equations or approximations and computer programs to solve the chemical problems now we have so many questions which will arise now okay and let's discuss few of them okay so questions can come like what properties can we compute with the help of computational chemistry we are saying that we will uh, compute some properties using computer but what are these properties the second question is that what are the fundamental principle behind this computation means that we will calculate some properties but what are the fundamental principles behind these uh, property calculations and the third question is how can you compute them these are mainly these points are these questions are mainly uh, based on the technical aspects that uh, if we have some programs if we have some software and if we also have computer then how we can compute them okay and the fourth question is that how can we analyze the computed data and explain real world problem so if we can able to generate data through computation then how can you analyze that data and also how can you explain this data to explain the real world problem so these all four questions actually uh, will directed us will direct us to the learning of computational chemistry so i hope after addressing all these questions one by one through this course you will understand the basics of computational chemistry and also you learn how to do the computation and also what are the fundamental principles behind the computations so before explaining all these questions let explain a few terms which are generally used in computational chemistry so first is theory and model what uh, does uh, the theory mean and what does the model mean so you know they these are all th these are these things now so a theory is one or more rules that are postulated to govern the behavior of physical systems okay so it actually uh, can explain the observed phenomena it can explain the future exp it can predict the results of future experiments and the theory can be presented in some mathematical form okay like uh, uh, Newton Einstein's relativity uh, theorem that is E is equal to mc square P is energy m is mass of the particles c is the velocity of light okay 
So, this is an equation. So, from here you can get the value of energy if you know the value of other two variables. Okay. So, when a theory is found to be always correct for many years, means that you have no exceptions like that, then we can make it a law or scientific law. So, for example, Coulomb's law specifies the energy of interactions between two point charges and it can be explained, uh, it can be represented as E is equal to Q1 Q2 by epsilon R12 and you know the meaning of all these symbols that Q is for it, uh, is a charge here, epsilon is dielectric constant of the medium and R12 is the distance between these two charges. Okay. So now, uh, what is the de uh, deficiencies of theory actually? Okay, so before that, we will describe the what is the model. But model is not the complete descriptions of the system. It is a way to describe and predict the scientific results, and it may be incomplete or incorrect. But it can predict up to certain level. Okay, so models might be uh, simple mathematical descriptions or it can be completely non-mathematical. So, models are very useful because they allow us to predict and understand phenomena without the work of performing the complex mathematical manipulations. Okay, so like uh, you know the Lewis dot representations of the chemical bonding or the valence electron pair repulsion model which actually used to define the geometry of the molecule okay so there are uh, actually these are not complete descriptions because lewis model does not contain the kinetic energies of the particles or coulombic interactions between them okay and vscpr models also the drastic simplifications of quantum mechanics to permit discrete choice of the preferred conformations so uh, the things are that that uh, these models actually not the perfect one but it can give you the idea to the real system okay like if using vcpr model it does not use any quantum uh, mechanics but still it can say uh, that ammonia is a pyramidal geometry has a pyramidal geometry okay so this is some way correct and it uh, some way it's you can say incomplete okay so now uh, the practical use of molecular modeling okay so you know that uh, in the left side you can see i have shown you an enzyme okay that is p450 enzyme you uh, can search about this enzyme so you know that enzymes actually works to catalyze the reactions in our body or in living beings. So uh, the main reactions actually takes place at a certain place of the enzyme and that is actually called the active site. Okay. So for the catalysis actually the total enzymes are involved but still if we can only take the active site where the main reactions takes place we can and model the reactions and try to understand the mechanism using this uh, active site only without uh, uh, considering the total enzyme we can get the uh, some idea about the reactions or how it can actually happening okay so these actually uh, called uh, model so these are the total systems and we can uh, take only some like hundreds of atoms only uh, from 40,000 of atoms okay so this can be a model of the enzyme that can predict the enzyme behavior okay so another th few uh, terms are that that like approximation computation and reality okay so uh, as I have said uh, earlier that a theory uh, is a complete mathematical description of chemical phenomena but sometimes or many of the times that cannot be solved exactly so this theory becomes impractical to get the real uh, problem so get to get a quantitative results the best technique is to do only part of the work okay means that we will ignore something and we will do some part of it and that is called the 
approximation okay so approximation can be uh, completely leave out part of the calculation or use an average rather than the exact mathematical description okay some other uh, approximation methods that you already uh, know from quantum mechanics class that is like variations theorem perturbation theorem or you can also simplify the function in some way okay so uh, all these things can be understand using sorting uh, the considering schrodinger equations and as you know that schrodinger equation can't be solved exactly except for hydrogen atom so which compels us to take some approximations and to get the computational approximate results okay so the reliability of these uh, solutions will depend that you can take any approximations okay but that uh, always will not give you the reliable results okay so there are uh, some things that if your approximations are very uh, high means that your uh, solutions will be very crude okay or if your approximations will not be so much se uh, severe then you will get the results more accurate results okay so there is a actually general concept about that called the uh, accuracy versus cost means that if you uh, take less severe approximations you need more time to compute to compute the data and you will get the high accuracy okay so this is actually inversely proportional relationship so if you uh, need the accuracy you have to provide more time but if you need the, if you do not have uh, more time then you have to compromise with the accuracy on the other hand computation can be defined just as the production of data with the help of computational hardware software using theories models and approximations okay and the reality reality is the uh, actually uh, what is going on in the nature so that is the final truth so computational chemistry mainly applicable actually to the ideal systems like the small systems where it can predict uh, the properties more accurately but not for all the systems it can okay and it can work as a complementary to experiment but it cannot replace the experiment okay next is the hardware software and algorithm these are also you need uh, in the computational chemistry these terms are uh, need to be explained so you know that computational chemistry require computer uh, more specifically hardware and software to do the computation so processor that speed uh, which speed up the calculations memory you know already these things and storage media are components of computer referred to as hardware okay these are all hardware and the efficiency of a given computational task actually depends on the nature of instructions how you are instructing your computer to do the computation that's the important thing okay and these instructions are actually called as software okay so in computational chemistry the software can be a single program or can be a set of programs okay so with uh, we do the computation for example gaussian which is the most useful uh, computational chemistry uh, programs and you will learn this program uh, during this course also and which actually has a lots of program connected to each other okay so if you do some computation uh, if you ask to do some computation it will call the programs one by one whatever you ask next is that so most computational chemistry software means that they have a lots of instru instructions are coupled there and these are written in a high level language or programming language okay so there are so many programming languages are there python fortran c double plus so these are also a very important uh, area of chemistry now you can uh, learn about these programs and try to solve uh, implement them more effectively in the computational chemistry and you can uh, solve the real world problem so the collection of all such instructions are usually called a code okay the language uh, of the code cannot be interpreted directly by the processor 
so what you wrote in the programming language that actually cannot be uh, understandable by the processor so processor also needs some software behind uh, before that that is called compilers or assemblers which actually translate the high level language instructions into the step by step operations that are carried out by the processing unit okay so in a related sense the manner in which uh, mathematical equations are turned into computer instructions called as algorithm okay also this is uh, uh, a key to efficient software development okay so operations like matrix diagonalization numerical integration etc are sufficiently complicated that different algorithm leading to the same results can be markedly in computational performance very markedly okay so if you have the efficient algorithm you can do the faster computation okay so uh, these are all the terms then uh, in the next lecture we uh, will start what the properties we can compute using computational chemistry that is the our first questions which we have arised in this first slide okay so thank you